So DJI have just released a new firmware update and DJI Fly update, especially for the Mini 4 Pro. And it begs the question, with all these firmware updates coming now and in the near future, should you even update? So I released this video a couple of days ago on the Mini 4 Pro. If you haven't watched that video yet, go and check it out at the end of this one. It's all about the saga of the 120 meter height limit in the EU, relating mainly to this guy, the Mini 4 Pro, and how you can adjust that. So I did a full video on that. Go and check it out at the end of this video. But in this video today, I'm gonna to be testing out the Mini 4 Pro with the new DJI Fly update, just to make sure everything's working as it should be. And then also at the end of the video, I'm going to be answering some of those questions that you asked me on the last video about this and all the confusion that relates to this 120 meter height limit in the EU, all these different rulings. I can't answer every single question you guys have asked me, but the ones I can answer, I'm going to answer for you. And if you have any more, just feed them back in the comments down below. So first of all, I'm gonna do a test on the Mini 4 Pro and show you some of these settings that changed for me and how you need to make sure that you actually go and check your settings if you update your firmware before you go off and fly. So let's do a quick check on the DJI Fly updates. And you can see here on the distance, I'm getting a flashing red 20 meter mark here. And strangely, quite a few of my settings have changed. So nothing has actually been added or taken away from these settings, but it's really important to check that everything's working as it should be. So make sure your obstacle avoidance is set to bypass. You want your display radar map to be turned on. And then your advanced return to home, I would just keep it at optimal. But look at my return to home altitude, it's only going up to 45 meters. This is not normal, is it? And this is because my flight protection data has completely changed. My max altitude of 45 meters. So because I'm in the UK, I can still change this up to 500. I'll keep it at 120. And the max distance, I'll just keep that on no limit. So it's really important to make sure everything is correct before you go off and fly. Also under safety, go to the very bottom and make sure your advanced safety settings are also correct. You wanna keep your signal lost on return to home. You don't want it on descend ever, and you might want it on hover if your home point is changing location. But for the most part, keep it on return to home. You might have also set some settings as well, like focus track settings. You might have adjusted some of these. Just check they're correct, and also your gain and expo tuning. You might have actually changed some of these for your drone under cine, normal, or sports, the speed of it. You might want to go and check them as well before you go off and fly. Now, if you do have a wonky gimbal, that's horizon level's not correct. Mine's actually looking pretty good. But if you need to change it, you go to gimbal calibration, and then just hit manual. And then you can see here, you've got horizontal and your, you can actually click on the minus or plus and change that if your horizon is not looking completely straight. If you go to button customization, if you might have selected some of these as well, just check they're correct. Now under camera, I was filming D-Log M. Mine has been switched to normal. So aside from this video, I would make sure it's on D-Log M all of the time. And then a little bit further down here, you've got grid lines. I always have the rule of thirds grid lines on. It was also switched off. So make sure that is also on. I would recommend that all the time. It's perfect for framing. Under style, sharpness and noise reduction, I always have it on minus one for sharpness. That had also changed. So nothing else is actually different on any of these settings. The zoom is working fine, so you can zoom up to three times. I don't normally use a zoom ever because it's a digital zoom, but I just want to check that everything's fine. On the previous versions in the past, you could get some crashes with this. It wasn't always very stable, but it is much better now. So recording's working great. So the gimbal's working great as well. Movements on the drone are working fine. So I'll do a rapid decline here and no issues whatsoever with this drone and it's not in great conditions either. I'll also just check the photo as well. I always like to click tap to focus before taking a photo. And I'll also take another one just in vertical mode as well. And then onto the main screen, did you know you can actually click on these icons and they will show you information like how much battery you've got. It will show the exact time until the forced landing or your low battery. You can also check the number of satellites and how strong your signal is. Then if you click on the in flight, you can also get the flight status and you can change some of these sliders quickly. So you can see there for me, some of my settings had changed on the RC2 for the Mini 4 Pro. And a firmware update, this is possible, it can happen. So make sure you go and check your settings all the time before you go off and fly. And talking of settings, this is just for you guys watching this. I have just released on my website, the Mini 4 Pro cheat sheets. I haven't officially announced these yet, but they are available and they are better than ever. Now you get 22 cheat sheets 
the Mini 4 Pro. So if you go off and fly and you forget all these key settings, these will enable you to have them with you all the time. So you're gonna have all of this knowledge of how to get the very most and best quality out of your Mini 4 Pro. So they're available on my website now. And just for you guys watching, if you enter the discount code UPDATE, you can get 20% off for the next 48 hours. These are gonna be released officially in the next couple of weeks, but they are available right now, just for you guys watching this. So the 120 meter limit, what an absolute mess this is. Just imagine you're a new pilot. You just pick up your Mini 4 Pro. You've never flown a drone before. And all over the place, you're hearing about 120 meter limits, EASA, declassifying your drone, class zero. What the hell? I mean, it's just an absolute mess, isn't it? Um, I first noticed about this when I was actually testing the Mini 4 Pro. I was in Spain and I noticed that that height limit was locked to 120 meters. I never noticed this before. I spoke to DJI back then. And ever since then, they've been trying to actually figure out a way of how they can get around this or adjust this. It's not because of DJI, it's because of the EASA rulings. So this is affecting people in the EU. And these are gonna be ways of how you can actually still fly over 120 meters, up to 500 meters if you want to. But to do that, with this new cover framework update, you have to make that choice. Do you stick to 120 meters and have your class zero drone in the EU? Or do you go through the declassification process of ripping this class zero label off and actually requesting for a higher limit so you can fly this up to 500 meters. But then this is no longer a class zero drone. It's a choice you shouldn't really have to make. It's, it is an absolute mess. It's not straightforward. It's very confusing. And if you're a new drone pilot, you have no experience about any of this. This is just an absolute massive headache. And I have to say, when I was testing this again in Spain, with that 120 meter limit, I had no issues getting the content or reviewing this to its full capacity. I just had to adjust where I was flying. So if I wanted to go to a place where it was hilly or mountainous, I would either have to walk a bit further or, or most of the time just drive a bit higher up. So it didn't have a big impact on me, but I can see why it would for a lot of people. But the problem doesn't just stop with the Mini 4 Pro. It's also all drones under 250 grams in the EU from 2024. These will also be classed as a C0 drone and that's gonna be coming via a firmware update. So we don't know when this firmware update is going to be, but then your Mini 3 Pro, your Mini 3, your Mini 2 SE will all be restricted to 120 meters. It's not just this guy. Thanks to EASA, these are also going to be restricted as well. So that means, should you actually update? Now you see the Mini 3 Pro, this has been out for some time now. I can't see at all any new features being put on this to kind of justify, yeah, I really want to update my firmware. I'm happy for it to be locked to 120 meters, but I'm gonna get waypoints and cruise control on here. That's not going to happen. So for the Mini 3 Pro, you might just want to skip some of these updates. So I would say, make sure before you actually see this pop-up notification and say new firmware updates and go and update it, and then you're restricted. You see, it could be just put in there and pushed in sneakily. It might not be there in the firmware notes. You need to be watching videos like this where I can actually go out and test it. I'll have the information and I can say to you guys, look, if you update your Mini 3 Pro, um, say the end of December, middle of December, then you'll be restricted to 120 meters and then you can make that choice. So be really cautious about updating if you have a Mini 3 Pro, Mini 3, Mini 2 SE. That would be my 100% advice. Now to answer a few of your questions and the main one, lots of people around the world were either messaging me or saying, look, is this gonna affect me? I live in America, is it gonna affect me? I live in Spain, is it going to affect me? I live in the UK, is it gonna affect me? So this currently, as it stands, this is just for EU countries. This is an EASA rulings. So if you're in the UK, you're in Canada, you're in Australia, anywhere outside of the EU countries, this isn't going to affect you. So for me, if I fly my Mini 4 Pro in the UK, it has no impact whatsoever on the settings. I can still fly and adjust the height altitude up to 500 meters. When I was in the US recently, again, no impact whatsoever. If I step foot into France, it will actually detect I'm in France and that will be locked to 120 meters 
unless I declassify this drone and now I can fly up to 500 meters. And the last video I did, I showed you how to actually request this higher limit if you're in an EU country and you get this new box now. But a lot of you guys were messaging me saying, look, I've updated to the latest firmware. I'm not seeing this request. Why am I not having this on my controller? Is there something wrong? I can still fly up to 500 meters. And just like point one there, it all depends where your Mini 4 Pro and you are at that time. So if you're sat in France, you will be able to see this message. You will get a request higher limit box after you've updated to the latest firmware. If you're sat in the UK or Australia or outside of the EU, nothing will be different on your DJI Fly app. You will still be able to adjust it up to 500 meters without doing any request. It is just where you currently are at that time. So a question one of you guys asked me, a fantastic question is, what happens if I crash this drone via DJI Refresh? Well, I asked DJI this and got an answer for you. And it basically is, if you crash this drone before the 1st of January 2024, you'll get a drone back. And yes, you can still declassify it. You can take that C0 label off and you can request a fly up to 500 meters if you're in the EU. However, if you crash this, have a problem with it after the 1st of January 2024, then you will be limited to 120 meters. You can't do that request declassification process. It'll be too late. So you need to be really careful when flying this drone. None of this Maverick stuff. You need to be on your game, really careful if you're flying this and you're in the EU. Now, another great question. I asked this question myself and it really isn't clear. So my advice would be to go onto some websites and book some really cheap flights to an EU country is, what happens if you live outside of the EU and you intend on traveling to the EU next year in 2024? Will your drone be limited to 120 meters? Well, yes, it would be. You see, currently, if you live outside of the EU, you cannot go onto your controller and request for this to be declassified. You have to physically be in an EU country. I've asked DJI if this can be made possible so you can request this from outside of the EU, but at the moment, that's just not possible, and I'm not sure if that will happen. So, if you were to go to an EU country, book your really cheap tickets, go to Spain before the 1st of January, you could request for this to be declassified. And then in theory, you could then go in 2024 again, and you will be able to fly your drone as a still declassified drone up to 500 meters. But if you were to stay outside of the EU now, and you were to go on holiday in say February 2024, it would be too late. It's literally like a ticking clock. All of this has to be done before the 1st of January. What's not clear though is, say I live outside of the UK. I was to go to Spain next week, I declassify my drone and at the end of December 2023, a firmware update comes, I update it and then this then is no longer declassified. It overrides what I've just done. Again, that's not clear. I can't answer that. Overall, this is just one big mess. DJI are doing everything they can to comply with the EASA whilst also trying to make ways to get around this, but it is far from straightforward. So just to reiterate, if you live outside of the EU, you've got nothing to worry about. So all my friends in the USA, fantastic news for you guys. But for everybody else in the EU, this is just an absolute mess. And because of this, I really recommend if you're interested in picking up one of these drones to pick it up now. Unfortunately, all of this ticking clock has just been put on us. So you have literally what, like eight weeks until the Mini 4 Pro from the 1st of January will be restricted in the EU. You won't be able to declassify it after then. And it's not just this, it's a Mini 3 Pro, the Mini 3, the Mini 2 SE as well. If you want to buy any of them drones in 2024, they will all be restricted. You can only declassify them right now. So I can see these selling and being really popular before the 2024. So I've just gone onto the DJI store and I've bought 69 of these Mini 4 Pros. So I'm gonna be selling them on eBay on the 2nd of January for a decent price, all declassified. So let me know if you're interested. But all jokes aside, if you do get one of these, I'll link it in the description down below. I really do appreciate it if you use that link. It helps the channel out a lot. But overall, this is one big, big mess. I wish it was a bit more straightforward. I wish I could answer more of your questions. And if you do have any more questions, make sure you put them in that comments down below. If you liked any part of this video, just hit that like button. It really does help out get videos like this to more people. And subscribe so I can keep you up to date on all of these updates, especially going into 2024. I've also been testing this drone. It's a fantastic drone. I've been flying it in America 
Africa, so I've got some great content showing you just what this drone is like. Aside from all of these politics about the 120 meters, this is a great drone. I can't wait to get to those videos and show you them. I've also got some Pocket 3 footage coming really soon as well. So hit that subscribe button and I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye-bye. Thank you.